What's up with the gang? It's your boy Josh. Back on another video, man. Today we got uh part two of Cat Williams Unleashed Club Shay Shay. We finna get straight into it. I ain't gonna lie. Uh if you're new, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram. Uh this was interesting. And it's still going viral. Like this is pissing a lot of people off. Well, so. when you start putting people on blast, it will. The thing about it is that if whatever he says, if it's true, own it. If it's not, you can defend it. Um, but as I said before, I think with Cat, he speaks what he speaks from his perspective, from his vantage point, from how he sees it. I'm not saying that he's wrong. I'm just saying that everything may not match as far as uh, everybody else's version of how they see what he describes. And uh, a lot of uh, the people he was talking about responded, but nobody said he was lying. I don't know that, but that's a very interesting observation if it's true. Yeah. All right. At the time that you did the movie, you were homeless. Is that true? Um, this was my situation. I, five months prior to me getting this first audition for Friday After Next, I got this baby son. I'm holding him up above me. He grabs my little chain. He's playing with it and he accidentally drops it. It breaks out my front two teeth. I'm in a situation now where when I go to the dentist, they telling me this going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars to fix this right. They not telling me what it's going to look like. I go get an estimate with no money involved, find out what I need to do. They find out you got a tumor in your upper jaw, so we're going to have to do a whole surgery for you. It's going to be a hundred bands. I don't have it. I don't have it. And, um, I'm only going to have this check from this movie. So while I'm doing this movie, we live in this trailer. Um, this is where we live. So when they come to work at five in the morning, we already there. When they leave at night, we still there. We just double back um, because we understood that this is our one opportunity. Um, and we have this opportunity to change our lives, just like a young man going for the draft. Right. We can actually get in the league with this. There are 30 comedians on this cast. They're all magnificent. This is the holy grail of the situation. Um, so, yeah, I was able to make sure that because it wasn't just my first movie. It was K.D. Albert's first movie. It was Terry Crews first. Movie. Absolutely. I was the leader of this group, which meant that we did we didn't do their rehearsals. They did rehearsal. We did our own rehearsals daily to make sure that we were at the level of professional actors. See, the thing about which is, it is that, too, with stuff like this. People who are the layman or people who aren't involved in the industry, we don't see we don't see the sacrifice and the danger that these cats put themselves in. We don't see how detrimental it is to them. For us, and that that's what's crazy about it. For us, it's all entertainment. For them, it's it's life. And so so that's why I find it interesting when you when you actually get a chance to get backstories and you get a chance to take deeper dives because you get to see what these people actually sacrifice, what they actually put down. Mm. Taraji P. Henson is one. She she's catching flack right now because she you know she she's busted out Oprah, uh, you know, for some stuff, and she explains how um, you know a movie that she's been involved in. She gets a check from it, and everybody think like, "Oh, wow, you know, it's all glamour and glitz." But she's saying that she could barely survive off of that. And then she, when she starts explaining the numbers, why, uh, you know, it, it starts making sense. So, so people who are who are in the entertainment industry, who are in front of the cameras, we think that their life is all about glamour and glitz and signing autographs and making bands and all that stuff. And that's really not the case, especially for a whole lot of people. So my hat is off to you know to those folks because. Um, uh, as, as far as those that let you in on their grind and their sacrifice, because you get to see uh, how much how much their craft means to them, it's just it's it's a beautiful thing. So uh, I just I should send out blessings and shout outs to to Cat Williams for actually revealing and sharing this aspect of his life because it's important. What made it so egregious? 
that guy. Say, I was supposed to. You were supposed to what? Kathy did have a good part in the movie, man. The Santa, Santa Claus was funny, man. The dude said the entire time we were filming, I can't play this role. They got a bandana over my nose and my mouth. My family not even gonna know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ted, uh, Terry Crews also said that you guys had a lot of, had a lot of conversation that this was your opportunity. Terry had the benefit of having been in some very high profile situations already and took L's. Mm -hmm. Like he had been in the league. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He, he, he had, um, done pro wrestling. He had done a lot of things. He had been televised and some things that hadn't worked. Right. And this was just fortuitous for him. And now you know what nobody has ever said in the whole industry in 20 years about, you know, the whole, Money Mike not getting raped in the bathroom. Right. So I understood going in that there's no reason. I lost every, for a five year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just, can we take some of this step and fetch it shit out? And then I can do it. Like, it don't need to be overtly homosexual because I'm not homosexual, right? It doesn't need that right. to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. And and me saying that and them going, oh, yeah, no problem. And then going to give it to this other guy and having him do it just like it was and acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, uh, it's interesting, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, again, I'm... You don't always have to sell to out <laughs> decisions. You know, look, I've had like him or don't like him. You can't argue with the fact that Cat will stand on his principles. And that's one thing that I do respect about him. I don't I don't buy everything that he's selling. But at the end of the day, he has always been consistent from day one, at least from my vantage point, and from what I see. He don't play with, you know, with certain things. It's like, no, nah, he doesn't have to change who he is in order to, to, to flash before, you know, before a camera. So I dig that. I had Cube. I've talked to Cube. And a lot of people say Cube don't, doesn't pay. What's your relationship with Cube? And what did that opportunity mean for you? Well, the ungrateful bastards that would say anything about Cube's payment. You shouldn't even talk to them anymore. Like you don't, you don't go to Goodwill. You don't go to a Goodwill thrift store and go, look at all this cheap ass shit. <laughs> Why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut up? You could have went to Hermes. Why you didn't go to Balenciaga? Why you didn't get a bowl of the ball main? You want to have that conversation? Right. What you mean the independent black dude who's filming it partly out of his fucking pocket? What you mean he didn't pay you enough? They weirdos weirdos that felt like they earned the opportunity because they were big no no yeah. i understood that ain't no 200 million dollar movie well i mean how much did you expect you was gonna make well i made now, enough to get Q? them teeth fixed just like you did yeah so, <laughs> so i <laughs> it was no harm no foul i knew that i was gonna go from there and there was no there was no turning know. back for cat williams okay. well here's the thing that's um, beautiful I wrote it. What I'm saying, I'm saying if I did it and I did a good job at it, you can thank me. I was involved. Right. I'm not going to come later on and tell you I never even read the whole script. So how you know what Rose? What? What do you mean you never read? The <laughs> like, you, like these guys whole job is to present something, unfortunately, and I'm just not a presenter. If you ask me a question, I'm just going to tell you the truth of how it went. Would you be willing to do another Friday? Cube already asked me to write it. I was supposed to have been writing it. That's this is what these guys are mad about. Like <clears throat> we lost some great people before this movie mm -hmm. John could come out regardless. Right. And so I, yes, I there huh? desperately to needs him. to be one. Mm. Um, Tiny. Um, but 
um, we miss John Witherspoon in a way that can't really be quantified, right. if I'm sure being enough. honest with you. He's a legend. And um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, oh, Lord. not Smokey. Oh, Lord. Wait, what, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what that mean? Oh, shoot. Okay. Clear off. Huh? What they mean? I'm listening. I'm gonna close the blinds. Okay. Ba basically, what he's saying is that the Chris Tucker, the version of Chris Tucker that we have now, is not, um, is not Smokey. Is he's not the same version? Epstein changed some things, and. Chris Tucker has been changed as well. He is intimating that the industry has changed Chris Tucker. And because I'm not in the industry, I can't comment on it, at least not sufficiently. But um, who is Epstein? Uh, Epstein, Epstein um, if you if you look at uh, um, There's a lot of political bits with it. I don't want to comment on it because I don't want to. Uh, <coughs> you got people who agree and disagree throughout the commentaries and 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 in the comments and all of that stuff. Some people are going to be down with it. Some people are not. It is what it is. We can have a conversation off camera about Epstein, though. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, we need to because because I want there, there's some stuff that I want you to understand. <sighs> That was deep, though. If I didn't know no better, I'd tell you, he's the greatest. I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> to be confident and not delusional is a real skill. Most of these confident people we see is really delusional. Well, you don't think you don't think they asked Chris Tucker to come back in the second in the snack in the second Friday? Mm. They did. Smokey, Smokey was all in. Smokey, there ain't no Friday without Smokey. One of the excuses that Chris we Tucker all agree to that, and there's no like next Friday without Friday, and there's no Friday after next without. Friday. Nah, we talking oh, about the road because you said that they don't. Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Chris was allowed to make the decision at the time that this is happening. Cat Williams is known for smoking weed. Willie Nelson is known for smoking weed. Right. Snoop's known for smoking weed. But none of us is really known except Willie. And I'm saying, Chris Tucker didn't want to be the poster child for smoking weed. He don't right. smoke weed like right. that. Right. He in the church. He Michael Jackson's best friend. Christmas. Michael Jackson called him Christmas. You ever met a man that gave you a little nickname like that? No. Mm -mm, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the greatest. Man, I ain't gonna be able to get nobody back. I ain't gonna be able to get no more comedians. They all coming. No, they ain't. Are yes, you are. kidding? Nah. Hey, I A promise good thing you. I got all the rest I, of them. I done, I done got the ones. Every, I promise you, everybody trying to double back. You're gonna be having to beat them off with a stick. <laughs> you, you won't let him. They're coming. <laughs> Much as. <laughs> you're on Dev Comedy Jam Comic View. What were those experiences like? What do you What do you remember most about Dev Comedy Jam and Comic View? Uh, Comic View was everything. Um, Comic View was really the break, um, and not Friday after next, just because. Comic View was just 3,000 of your stand-up peers, and we just throw sets of all of them up there, and we see who the audience likes. Who do they like? And um, it was a great wild, wild west time to be involved in comedy, and um, the same is true for Def Jam, because uh, hip-hop was a fad at one time, and hip-hop ain't gonna last, and why are you doing that? Um, and that's how it was for blue comedy. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a comedian that cussed, you were ridiculed by the mainstream comedy mm -hmm. geist. That would be like me being on Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on there. I need to be on Shannon. Joe Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. <laughs> 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 but that's really how it is. I'm so sorry I'm competitive. You're an athlete, right? You yeah, yeah, I, I can tell. You understand. Will there ever be another <laughs> comic new, Def Comedy Jam? Can, could, could that 
in today, in 24, 25, 26. Could we see that again? They've already announced it. It's already going. You didn't know? Mm -mm. Yeah, Kevin Hart purchased it, so he's now doing uh, Comic View. That happened at the same time that they gave DC Young Fly uh, Hollywood Squares. Where? Yeah, because they tell you that there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? And he now opening it up for... Don't such and such open the gate for... What do you mean ain't no gatekeepers? There's a hundred gates out here. Hmm. Would you I, I, everyone I've seen got a keeper. Would you have wanted to do Comic View or Def Comedy Jam? Would you have wanted to be... I, I think we just mentioned I did them both. No, I'm saying he purchased the rights and refranchise it. Nope. They didn't offer it to me anyway. <clears throat> Like, Comic View did a couple of disservices to comedy as well. Mm -hmm. So there were people mm -hmm. like me that were out there getting two and three standing ovations in one set. And that wasn't good for television. So what they did was they started making everybody get a standing ovation. So they would tell the audience, when they get off stage, everybody get up and cheer. And so now the fact that I'm the only one out there going to get standing ovations is now making people think everybody get a standing ovation. Mm. And that's not how comedy is. So right. I, I understood why that couldn't go anymore. Because remember, Ricky Smiley sat right here and told you a story about how he performed with uh, Mike Epps and Cat Williams when he did Comic View and to let him tell it. <clears throat> he was funnier than both. <laughs> My name Lil Dow. <laughs> Boy, we ain't talking about the special cat. needs. That's, cat. Ooh, that's good. That's a different that's time. Some clever material. That was a different time, Cat. Uh, no, it wasn't. It yeah. was the time I was there. But I'm saying that time, this time, same times. No, but I'm saying just like people that tell you the Egyptians, they're not black. Egypt is in Africa, folks. Yeah. As long as Egypt is in Africa, they gonna be then Egyptians they are African. Would not. <laughs> Do you believe you could tell the same jokes today as when you started out? He wouldn't want. I to. mean, Eddie Murphy not he telling those jokes. Richard Pryor not being able, wouldn't be able to tell those jokes in 2024 that they told in the 70s and the 80s. So they wouldn't have told them. But that's my point. They're not inferior people. No. If they were in this time, they would be going according to our time. Just like then we were going according to that. Like that's how it is in the world. There are words that we can use for a while. And when we use them for a while until somebody says that ain't a good word, yeah. we should stop saying that. Correct. That don't make people feel good. And we stop saying the word and we move on to another word. You can't say the R word. You can certainly say special needs. Yeah. You can certainly say spectrum. He's slow. You can, you can, you, there are things that you can say to get your point that don't have to hurt people. Right. But you would know that if what you did was construct the English language for a living, mm -hmm. then you would understand that part. You financed your first stand up. You had 20, it cost you 22. Thousand. You had twenty five to your name. Yep. What? Why did you decide to do that? You 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 believe that much in cat? I believe that much in business. In business, the goal is for you to become independent and be the boss, take the responsibility, and also get the profit. Okay. That's all. How 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 can I be looking for you to put me on if I wouldn't? And if I can't show you what you missed out on, why would you believe me? Now, the fact that I was able to do it 12 times, that's the real thing. The thing, the part that I'm able to do it all across the country, the fact that every time I do a tour or a special, you think, well, that's sponsored by somebody. Somebody did a good job. No, no, just... Just the guy they're kicking around, just the one who might mentally not be all there. He's the one picking the outfits, writing this guy's material, booking the shows, making sure he gets there. He's the one hiring the other comedians. He's. But hey, <laughs> I knew that that's the end goal. So if that's the end goal and I'm there when I start, why would I deviate from that? Right. Remember, I, 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 mm. I, my goal was mm. to get this far in Hollywood and mm. still have a virgin asshole mm. <laughs> and I never mm. had sucked a penis. That was my only goal. I didn't want to 
get with a white woman because I was scared. She might have me running down the street like Jonathan Then Majors. you go speak up, okay? Not because I didn't like white women. I think white women are as great as any other women. But I'm not going to act like I'm not scared of them. I have a reason to be scared. You could be Kang the Conqueror, and they could take your rabbit ass down in two weekends. And that's the truth of the matter. So I stayed away from that. And remember, I told you the drug story from when I'm in the park. Yeah. So these are just the things. I had all of those when I came in. I already was. <laughs> that's what they don't like. I did not know you, you're that's telling serious. me and showing me a side of the business that I didn't know. Yep. That you guys, are comp man, the competition, the competitiveness. That's all business. I don't care if they're selling Coke. You wouldn't believe the things that Coca-Cola says about Pepsi. You wouldn't believe the water conversations between Dasani and Liquid Death. Like in all business, in all sports, competition is a driving force. Business is and I don't require opinion. anybody to be better. Who am I? I just require if you're a loser. And you've taken shortcuts at every chance. And you've made sure that you didn't put anybody on that really had a work ethic and was a God-fearing person and you helped it. If that was never you, then don't act like that's you. Don't get out here now that you don't do stand-up and start acting like, oh, you're not sure why you don't do stand-up no more. I heard you got run off. You better be careful the nigga that run you off gonna show up and he gonna tell everybody. I mean, what you gonna be able to say? Nothing. Why you think I speak with such clarity? I'm actually involved in each one of these stories I told you about. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't mess with The one comedian, sure. and we've been sitting here doing this interview that you hold in very high regard is Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle walked away from 50 million. You said it was more. Tell the story. That's right. I want no, you tell it. No, you're, you're no I want you to tell it. You really are the best. You're proving it here today. <laughs> as much as I'm proving it, you proving it. You proving it. Um, yeah, that wasn't the thing. It wasn't, people say that. He lost $50 million. No, no, that's not even close to what happened to this dude. And until you understand what happened to the dude, you don't understand what happened. Like, no, not they offered him 50 million and he turned it down. Who gonna turn down 50 million? Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Uh, Cause P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. <laughs> I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can say I'm so freely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come on. Because early on, you was accusing me of being. Can't. Man. Can't. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, but you know, some of these people. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell uh -oh. me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner. You my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We're going to do it together. We're going to do some buddy cop shit. I said, Martin, you got my motherfucking word, my nigga. Go do what you got to do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know, we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house, too. I almost died. And I got to read this script from all these good white people. Where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? You already played the old lady as an FBI agent. We can play anything now. We can be playing a dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? And I get so mad, I say, you don't want me. You want Brandon T. Jackson. And that's who they went and got. Twice I said it, they went and got him. Just like I'm telling you, I had that other dude's work. I had all of it. All I did was say, I want to punch it up so it's not offensive to real niggas. And that's how I got in this position. I sure hope I have a uh, club Shay Shay after this year. <laughs> it's gonna be in a dimension that's never been. Yeah, it's hey, gonna be. A, it's hey, gonna be it, it, the it. greatest thing floating in twenty twenty four. Mark the words. No way. In a in a whole different realm of business. <laughs> truth, truth becomes a a dangerous commodity 
when you're in the presence of those that would rather suppress it. You can't, you, it's, 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 truth becomes that light that you turn on in a dark room that's full of roaches. You can't stand the light. And I'm not saying that everything that Kat is saying is absolutely true. However, I do sense that there's some roaches scattering. <laughs> Oprah and coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch. Watch. God's people ain't that few. Yeah. He said, Don't believe Prince. Just watch. You met Prince. Prince was a friend of mine. He was a friend of mine. What was those conversations? Because he is, look. I mean, sometimes we don't really re understand or, or appreciate someone until they're gone. I did. I was a big Prince fan. All of his stuff <laughs> yeah. because he could play all the instruments. He could sing. He could. Dance. He was an entertainer. Yeah, that could sing. And what he wrote. I mean, who thinks of Cherry Moons? Who thinks it snows in April? Who a Raspberry Beret or a, a, a Pink Cashmere? The thing, the Purple Rain. The things that he wrote about. Well, like, bro, who who mind goes there? The colors. Yeah, he was um he was like any unlike anybody in the world. Um he he was um he was just an amazing individual. I I was able to meet him when I was 12 and I knew him um my entire life through all of his changes. I was able to um assist him many times. If you go look at Prince's car collection, you'll see that Prince don't have not one car Cat Williams ain't got. He got the Prowler from Friday after next sitting there. He got the same Bentley as me, like because we share certain things. Our our connection was lyrics, musical lyrics, um, women, and cars, and that's those are the areas where he trusted uh, my opinion on things, and um, that's where I got to be helpful in his life, and he was helpful in mine in um, really all different types of ways, especially about the business as far as being a black man that was rich in this business at 18 years old, had already did his first million dollar contract, had already broken records, was determined that he didn't want to be like anybody else, was so great of a guitar player that black people just stopped caring about guitar and he got left out on a limb and somehow still had to create his way out of that. He was just really a, a, a one in a billion type person. I was lucky to know him. It, now, almost, it almost feels like like Cat is taking America on a crash course mm -hmm. um, of in life and entertainment behind the scenes yes he's 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 opening up that velvet rope letting you in beside uh letting you in behind it and he's opening up the doors that are ugly and the folk on the inside doing stuff that they may not necessarily ought to be doing it's like they're turning around saying oh shoot because we've been exposed because he walked in with a camera it's like yep see look it's just like I told you. And you can tell he's been holding this in for a long time. Well, he may just not have had the platform for folk to ask him. And Shannon Sharp has the unmitigated gall and the unmatched audacity <laughs> to present it as Cat is saying it without trying to change it up. So, raw. Yeah, yeah. Unleashed. Real, real and raw. <laughs> there are specials and the streaming. Um I don't know. I don't think there's as many and there's no DVDs now. So where, so, so where, where are you on this, this streaming, the specials? I mean, obviously you, you still tour, but how much do you focus on? Okay. I'm going to tour say a hundred days or 150 days, but I'm going to do a special. Well, now that our relationship with Netflix is at the eight figure mark, um, eight, how, how you said eight. Often, how often you want to make them? Oh, you you said eight. I mean, like like right, right. five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Got to be ten million to qualify. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, once you're at that level, I mean, what'd you do? I I I I'd be willing to bet you say. Shh. <laughs> Every time you turn around, I'm gonna be doing another yeah, one. Hey. I think that's what you would say if you was any good. Yeah. And like I said, like I said, 
with 12 comedy specials. Why do I need to be in these conversations with these specialist people? Say it ain't got no special you remember. Steve ain't got no special you remember. Ricky ain't got no special you remember. Faison ain't. Special. Yep, it was 20 minutes long. It was good too, though. It was. He's good. Not it was good. He's yeah, good. See, that, quite He's my guy. good. Don't think because I said something um, a derogatory that I I don't I don't know how to hate. Well, I want to go back Earthquake to that. has considered that I because I not it was good. 20 minutes long. It was good. Ain't got, Steve ain't got no special you remember. Ricky ain't got no special you remember. Faison ain't got no. What? So why do y'all get your special? Yep, it was 20 minutes long. It was good too though. It was. He's good. Not it was good. He's yeah, good. Yeah, see, that, that, He's my good. Don't think because I said something um, a derogatory that I, I I don't I don't know how to hate. Earthquake has consistently. I don't think anybody's ever said Quake wasn't funny. He he probably never been booed. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think he's ever given a bad performance. They thank you, my life. dog. But but um. Quake has been to our But show. his just do was overdue. Uh -uh. He was in a whole different situation. Yeah. Because he wasn't able to translate the stand up to the movie Ooh, thing. The TV. He yeah. took a hit. Most people don't take a hit. They're just judged on their stand up. Right. So yeah, no. I I I even though it sounds like there's a lot of people I don't that's not the case. I I am a, I'm a proponent of all of us who are in this when you got in the stand up, was crossing over, was doing TV, was doing movie, was that a, was that a part of it? You like, okay, I'm gonna do, I, I'm doing stand up. Okay, next next the the next progression. The other funny part in this is that I bet there was a whole lot of comedians, uh, who are who are more mainstream, who are hoping and wishing that Cat didn't bring their name up in this as the fallout <laughs> has begun because. Uh, you said that there's already people that are responding and reacting mm -hmm. to to what Cat has said. So um, evidently, there has to be some validity to what he's saying. It's just it's it's kind of it's kind of cold blooded that that Cat's putting it out, but at the same time, it's a blessing in disguise too. Is TV movies throughout throughout the history of stand up, sir? That's that's the goal for all of us. That's how it goes. That's why when you hear these dudes talking about, oh, I didn't want to be a movie star. You just know it's disingenuous. Like, what are you talking about, dude? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I just wanted to do a game show. Right. What? Mm. Are you sure? Are you sure? Because I thought you did Mark Curry's show over after he had just done hanging with Mr. Cooper. Why would you do all of that man's stuff that he did on his show on yours and then do the dude's stand up when you go on the road and then you never put Mark Curry on your show or nothing? Like, if you don't say anything, these dudes will run over you. I don't know if you know how bullies operate. I but do. if you don't stand up for yourself, oh there really gosh. is nothing they won't do. Right. So, tr so true. You're a very generous man, Kat. Uh, you, you're the sole sponsor of Melba Moore, <laughs> getting a star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You, sp you did all that on your own. Why? What, do you have a personal relationship with Melba? No. No. I, um, I understood that I um I I understood <clears throat> that she was a black woman in a time where <clears throat> it mattered what you look like and they had a certain thing that they needed you to look like and act like in order to be successful. Right. And she just never did that. She wasn't tall enough. She wasn't fine. Uh, they didn't like her looks. They didn't like that her hair was natural. They talked crazy about her and yet she still made all of these achievements and I'm like, understand, I'm already in the Comedy Hall of Fame. I'm already going to heaven no matter what happens. If it ends in a second, I'm up there. So it gives me the leeway to do some things that are simply because it's the right thing to do. When you are fearless, mm -hmm. so you're, 
When you're fearless, you are a scared person. No, 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 no. From no. others, by others. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. When you are fearless, you become feared. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I was trying to say, yeah. Because when you, when you, when you walk into the spot, folk know, okay, the facade is not going to work with that one. Being, being disingenuous is not going to get over with that one. He's not going to smile if it ain't funny. Being He's not going to dance if he doesn't hear music. Being with somebody who, who's not scared to die is scary. Like them, that's a very good way of looking at like that. Like the uh, like the terrorism, like when you if say if you're on a plane, yes, 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 those terrorists, like they not they gonna drive, they that get plane on in the building with with the point to die. Yeah. So if you aren't ready or if you're unsure, don't get on that plane with that one. <laughs> so the truth of the matter is, they wanted to give me a star, but. Please don't consider me and this this person been sitting on this list this whole time. And just because they ain't got enough money, they can't get they just do. That's crazy. When do you start? That That's hurtful. What if somebody can't afford their flowers? You mean they don't get them? No, God don't operate like that. He would send a dummy like me to come and take care of that. Just so that the right thing happens. That's how the universe works. The last shall be the first, and the first shall be the last. Because remember, I was, what am I spending my money on? I'm not spending my money on strippers. I ain't spending them on drugs. Why not? Like, Stripper what? Box. Because if I, go in a, <laughs> if I go in a strip club, I'm only trying to get her out of there. Yeah. I have no intention of her or any other people being in this position. If I see a girl I like at the strip club, I'm telling her, you know you don't have to strip no more after this. Ah. This could be your last day. How about that? I love it. What would it be like just to leave it I all? It. I love it. You ain't got to be a hoe no more. I love it. God damn. I don't even want you to go get your purse. Just leave it. Ain't nothing. We get new ID. We get new ID and credit card and social security card. We don't need none of that. Yeah, none of that. I love it. This life don't look good on you. Yeah, you don't even look like a drug got, addict. Got me thinking. Got me thinking, cat. Right. You hear these athletes talking about? Yeah, we was out there tricking. The what? Mm -hmm. Why? You're part of the problem. You're part of the problem. Stop paying people that you don't have no respect for. Hmm. For us. Why is it doing that? It sets it up bad for us. We got women out here can't find a man because they acting like him. Mm. You are alpha. Boy. Facts. Now the alphas all Boy, want these subservient husbands. No you can't have one. Bang or happen. It ain't women. gonna happen. Mm -mm. Sorry about that. Okay, go ahead. Boy, you done got me canceled. How many times in this program? Where's the camera? I didn't write nothing I said tonight. It's all been on these cue cards, and I'm just going to keep reading them. Wow. Ask you the next question. The Migos. Did you help them get out of financial situation? Whoa, 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 what? He said the Migos. He asked if he helped. I don't think we ever as a nation can remember a time that the Migos were financially. As a nation can remember a time that the Migos were financially unsuccessful. So for the record, I would assume that they've never needed Cat Williams financial assistance for anything. I'm sure that between QC, the label and other things they were taken care of. On the other hand, if I was given the opportunity to help them, would I? Of course I would. That's what I do. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a pro-black non-racist. Like, I really, really love wow. black people, but I don't love them more than other people. I love everybody. I wow. just, I'm a black. Wow. Hold, hold on. That's got to sink. Did you, did you, do you understand that? Mm -hmm. That rascal said, I am a pro-black non-racist. And it's like, that would make some folk uncomfortable because they don't understand it. It's like, I don't, well, never mind. Oof.
black guy, and I I I, I try to stick with that. But um, yeah, I I'm I'm not one of those uh, pillow talkers. I I'm I'm not one of those uh, pillow talkers either. Like when I do something good, mm -hmm. I'm really not doing it for the gram. It's not it's not for it's not for any of that. I'm just doing it because it's good to do. I appreciate that. I read. I don't know if this is true, but I did. Appreciate that. I read. I don't know if this is true, but I did read that comedians on your show say that women sometimes would bring them money and not say where it came from. Say that again. Comedians would say women would bring them money and not say where it came from. Uh, right. So um, I'm not a feminist like um, a feminist would be, mm -hmm. but I do believe that there are no there that in my camp, like if I had 35 people in my camp. Right. right. I believe that other than four jobs, I believe mm -hmm. that a woman is better at any of them jobs than any man could be. Okay. So 10 of these jobs, no man can work because I'd rather a female be there. If I gotta smell anybody's breath, I want it to be hers. <laughs> I don't want none of you crusty. Like I, so, so what I'm saying is it, it, in a staffing issue, I'm gonna have 75% women just cause I prefer them. Right. I, I don't prefer to hear two guys talking in the corner. I prefer to hear two ladies talking in the corner. I don't care what they're talking about. I just prefer that. So a lot a lot of times I will utilize ladies to convey a message. If a comedian is doing a great job um, somewhere in the country, he, he just did a masterful set and nobody's going to pay him. They just clapping. And I know he's broke as shit back there. Wouldn't it be nice if somebody just showed up and gave him a little blessing? And he didn't have to suck me off for it. And thanks, cat. And just, boy, I really needed it. See, when you help people, you don't have to make an announcement about it. One of the worst things you can do is, is, is find a homeless person, bless them, and film it. You ain't got to do that. Just, just do good. Don't let your right hand, that's what it's about. Don't let your right hand le know what your left hand is doing. You don't have to, you don't need a marching band and a drum roll to do something nice for somebody. Why would you do that? actually just trying to help people you would people know that's how I pay my tithes. If I got paid a hundred thousand dollars to be at your city, I'm going to take 10,000 of that and put it in your homeless area. Not because I got to, because you gave me a hundred racks to come to your little rinky dink town. Who would I be to not pay my tithes back to your town? That's how I got in this position. Wow. It's about you principles. adopted seven kids. <clears throat> Why? That's a lot of kids. For a man that's as busy as you are, travels as much as you do, on the road as much as you are, kids, spend a lot of time life. because you have to spend a lot. I mean, it's not the easy. I mean, maybe it comes just so comes so innocence. natural to you to put pen to paper and to write things down and be able to go out there and perform a set. But that's a lot of responsibility, Kat. Right. Right. But <laughs> if there was a God, what would he think about you if you did that? It ain't gonna impress God. I'm saying let's just let's say for example. Okay. That Wait, what'd you say? Okay. You and I, we cannot impress God. Mm. You can you you there's nothing that you can do to make God say, Wow, that was <laughs> real cool. Yeah. The way you and I impress God is through our faith in him. And I don't mean to turn this into to a religious bent, but at the end of the day, all in all of our righteousness, the Bible still says it's nothing but filthy rags in God's eyesight. So at the end of the day, you might think that your righteousness is all good 
And because you do X, Y, and Z, you got a list of 10 things. And I have a list of stuff that I do. God is saying, and we call it righteous. God is saying, I'm not wiping my face with either one of them rags because they both are jacked up. So I, so regardless as to what Cat is getting ready to say, God isn't impressed by what we do. He's not. And and God does want us to do well by one another, but but that's not what moves God. Mm-hmm. You know, so that God is real. Yes. Okay. And let's say he be looking at what you do. Yes. What would he say if you did that? He said that cat, that's that's a very that's a very kind gesture. That's very generous no. of you. My whole life, since I was telling you when I was young and they was asking me what I wanted to be and nothing I wanted to be was what I wanted to be God's friend. That's a weird thing if you are atheist. If you are atheist, I didn't even say nothing. I rock with that, but if you believe in God and I tell you that I wanted to be God's friend and I wanted to even go to Hollywood and still be God's friend. Yes, sir. If I told you that that was my aim. Yes, sir. You can understand where I'm at. Yes, sir. Like, <laughs> I, I promise you, I, no jealousy, no bitterness, <laughs> none of that. I got exactly what I was trying to get. I haven't been shorted in any. You don't have to try to impress your friends with what you do. Your friends will be impressed by who you are. Simply, simply because you are who you are. Anyway. I mean, seven, eight kids, single. You gonna get married? You, you remember the conversation where I was, where it was me? Yes. And I didn't know what was gonna happen to my two little brothers and yes. they was just gonna be out there? Yes. So when it gone full circle and I'm one of the position. I'm one of the richest men that ever lived. And I don't I don't I don't mean please don't look at my net worth. I saw my net worth. I I had that on me. So, <laughs> I don't, I don't I don't mean, you said that in the other one. What I'm saying is like I don't know if Shannon understands what he just said. I'm what? saying my net worth is less than my last Netflix deal. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? It makes sense. <laughs> what he's saying is that he's rich, not based on Benjamin's. He's rich in life. He's rich in the stuff that makes life matters. Don't get no gooder than that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm fine. Jesus was poor. Jesus ain't had nothing. Yes, he so did. So why don't we be mad? You say I don't have nothing. They ain't had the many they have back then, okay. Jesus gave away his oh. his riches. When 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 he was born, they brought him frankincense and myrrh. That's he said what the master was showing is that that stuff is not what really pushes the envelope in life. But I I get the point. Mm. I get the point that he's making. So why don't we be mad? You say I don't have nothing. They had the amenities they have back then, okay. Say it again. We got different amenities now. Not, not more than gold. Gold was the amenity of that time. We still got gold. <laughs> gold <laughs> still running. They have the Rolls Royce. They got a, hmm. you. You can buy. You can buy a, a ass. That's what they call it in, in the Bible, biblical time. They were cheap. No, they weren't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying if you really want to say, I'm saying a color nan is cheap. So back in the day, I would give my girl a donkey. Today we get her a color nan. But I'm saying whoever, I'm saying whoever, whatever it is, I'm saying we. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. I'm saying because what are we going to do? I done already told you I'm one of the richest people that ever lived. Yes. Only in the fact that when I wake up in the morning, no matter where I am, I don't need nothing. Whatever I need is right around me. And whatever I don't have, it's only just because I don't have it. It's not because I can't get it. All I got to do is want it, and it belongs to me. So because of that, because I'm favored by God, like when I see people's wives and stuff, I don't even look at them. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't want to look at nothing I don't want to have because I, I know how blessed I am. If I look at it, I got it. <laughs> That's how Diddy be feeling. Now, come on, man. Come on. Uh, <laughs> that boy's on a shot. That cat is speaking in, right now, he's speaking in such a different realm. It's not even, 
Shannon is having a conversation. Cat, Cat is 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 freely giving some life lessons. So you're not supposed to look at anything that you don't want. Not me personally, just because God has given me literally everything I ever even pump faked like I want. And uh, that's the whole thing. That's that's the whole thing is I don't I don't have a type of woman. Every woman that I ever had as a type, I ended up getting her. Now she's not the type anymore. Now I understand that every woman is a one of one. Like you can't really have types. Mm. Mm. What? Cause he, see, I tried to ask me something about marriage, but then I, I ain't said nothing about no marriage. Yeah, you did. When you rewind the tape, you, you let it out. You was like, "So you ever gonna get married?" And then you took it back. It's okay. It's okay. I, Are you? I, I, I wasn't on. See, see. Oh, can you see what he just did? What? Okay. Caught him out. Yes. Yeah. It wasn't nasty, and it would. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It, it wasn't mean. But when you. When you are comfortable, confident with who, where, and what you are, you don't have to make apologies. You don't have to, you don't have to change up who you are. Just be who you is and not who you ain't. Because if you is who you ain't, then you ain't who you is. Doggone it. It's a photographic are memory. Are you? I'm not against it. Like most people that are not married is because they're afraid of commitment. It's right. not that like that for me. It's no, just gotta, like, it the whole time I wanted to be married, I... I had kids, so I had to try to fill my wife's place before she got there. So right. I'm already got kids without a mother, but so now I, I got to be doing laundry. I'm I'm washing dishes. I'm reading stories. I mean, I'm having to nurture. I'm having to do all of this, and I got to the point where I didn't need the wife. I'm doing it, and we're doing it, and I'm not replacing a woman in their lives i'm letting them see that that's just the only thing that we don't have and um it was easier for me to do that because you have to understand that all of the kids i'm raising at this point Mm -hmm. they have fathers you see they have a mother you see i'm a different person i'm raising you and so that needs to be done with the other respect for the others that put work in as well. So yeah, um, I, I never had a problem getting married. I... What's one of the one things you try to teach your kids? I don't teach anybody anything that's over 18. I've done the work I was going to do. But as kids, I really just tried to teach um, the things that can't be bought, um, your integrity. Um, trying to live your life in a way that you yourself could be proud of if you had to look back on it. And um, um, I didn't do very good at leading by example, but behind the scenes, my I, that, gosh. that's never what I was pushing. Um, oh my gosh. Um, they understood that <clears throat> because of my stance, there was a certain thing that would come my way. Mm. Did you hear what he just said? Mm -hmm. Man, if I wasn't such a roughneck, he'd he'd get an allergic reaction with that. Cause of uh, you, you, you want you want to instill certain things in your kids and in the people that are around you. The crazy part is that you don't always represent the best example of that which you want to give. And so, so the challenge, the hurt, the frustration comes in because you know, you know that you're going to fail, but the best that you can do is hope that they pick up your intent. I'm not saying that I did the best thing for all, for all of y'all as, as my kids, but I hope if I did nothing else, I hope that you all were able to, to, to at least feel the intentions that I had for y'all. And I feel, oh, I feel what he says, what, what, what he's saying right now. Mm-hmm. And so accountability and responsibility is part of what you're teaching. Is right. that, you know, even if you're doing the greatest thing in the world, there's this thing called no good deed goes unpunished. Like there's a real Murphy's Law. Like 
Uh, basically, in raising kids, you're just trying to give them a better manual and an outline of how life works than your parents gave you. You know, right. and so yes, um, yes. that's how this I did. Rascal here. See, this is life. How do you avoid toxic women? Hey, give me, give me, give me. I mean, so I mean, because obviously, you know, you like women. I do, and I probably like toxic ones more than God anybody. Damn. That's because I ask you this. Hold on, because toxic women are exciting, and that's just a fact. Part of toxicity is exciting. <laughs> I'd rather skydive with her. Uh, but 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 if you have toxic women, just understand that all monsters are feeding off of something. And if you find out what th this toxic woman is feeding off of, you can just begin to turn off her feeding points. And it drives a toxic person crazy and they'll get away from you. So whatever, if, if she's truly toxic, there are certain things that she's doing that help fuel her toxicity. You're not noticing it, but it's what it is. Why do you think she watches murder mysteries before she goes to sleep? Why is it always a crime drama playing and turn it off? Turn it to cartoons. Make a... <laughs> no, no, you don't get to. What's she listening to? You gonna be listening to Sexy Red? You broke. <laughs> this, this, woo. this rascal here. Toxic people are trying to get things. They're not being toxic for no reason. They're gaining something out of how they operate. That's why they operate like that, because they get something. As soon as you find that out, you'll be able to cut off what they're getting, and they will leave. Yeah. You were married once. Never. You weren't married? Never in life. So would you have a cohabitation agreement? Never. How? How could I be a single parent and be married? You, could, two th and, you know, there are people that like well, were married and then they get divorced things. and then they become single parents. That's how that works. Yeah, but a person who's never been married means okay. he's never been married. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to take your word for it. Why would you need to take my word for it? Hold on, hold on. If I had been married, wouldn't have somebody have said who she was? No. It might have been a long time ago. No. Please. I've never not been famous, sir. I, I've just, <laughs> I just, I just worked the story out to you. That, I don't have no hidden mysteries in my life. That was Jesus. I don't have no periods in my life where it's unaccounted for. No, no, no. That person that said that was a liar. I got a case right now in L.A. This lady said she was my assistant for 14 years and I heard her or something like that. I, Never worked for me not a day in my life. Liars lie because they want to. But people always say, why would they lie? No, there are several women have said they was married to me. It's just when it went to court, they had to say, I was married to him spiritually. You shut up. <laughs> How you going to be married to me? My kids don't know you. Mm. Answer me that. So do you have a problem? Do you have a problem bringing women around your kids? No, not then or now. <laughs> I've always lived with several women. Like I'm known for several. That. Yeah. Like more than one. I've already told you that I prefer the company of women to yeah. the company of men. So if I told you that me and a couple dudes on my staff sometimes have to cohabitate, nobody finds a problem with that. Yeah, so it's me and three ladies cohabitating because that's how the business gets done. Like, I don't want a chef that scratches his nuts before he cooks. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> like, I, no disrespect to these guys that go around with these large male only groupings, but that's not my episode of Entourage. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you were approached. You were approached by seven gunmen. You were robbed, shot in the thigh. Mm. Say so it again. You were robbed once, correct? No, I never. Been you robbed. didn't get robbed. You didn't. You didn't get approached by gunmen. Tried to get robbed. They didn't take anything. I wasn't even the. I wasn't even um, the target. I wasn't even who they were talking to, and, and not because I say that. Because if you look at what time period it is. I'm not even making 5000 a year. 
So robbing me wasn't an answer. Now, <laughs> this is before Oklahoma. If you, <laughs> you talking about a terrible condition. They'd have been disappointed thinking they'd get something off of you, huh? Mm. If they'd have robbed you. Look, I, so in three cities, there, it's legendary that Cat Williams would walk down our streets with his baby in a baby stroller, with a diaper bag, with a gun in a diaper bag. The only thing I need is a pass. Don't mess with me and just let me go about my business. I, I'm living in Inglewood, Compton. I'm living in Manchester and Western. I'm in LA, the gang capital of the world, but never robbed, because why? I'm not pretending to be something I'm not. You think I'm a blood, you think I'm a crip. I'm from Ohio. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I'm a father. Right. I'm trying to do something out here. And not only do I not judge what you're doing, I'm not trying to be involved. Right. That's mm. the difference. That's mm. where the respect comes from. Mm. To your tour, the Dark Matter tour. Yeah. Filming next uh, uh, Netflix special. In May. May. Yep, next Netflix yeah. special. And, oh, you two theater in Inglewood. I'm going to catch that. Mm. I thought you might say that. I'm going to catch that one. Right, because it's a homecoming for me. Because I lived on, um, I lived on Hazel, so you know. I got a case. People know I lived in the heart of Inglewood. They saw me walk down Market Street with the babies I'm raising. Like they understood that. No, no, no. I was really not pretend. Oh, he wanted me from the hood. No, I'm living there on the street. What's your favorite city to tour in? <laughs> Dallas. The next one, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the real beauty of travel. Right. That's why most people don't have the empathy and the sympathy that they need to have for other people. Mm -hmm. It's because they haven't seen other people. Right. Like if you went to Ireland and you saw what them people was like, and you went to Sweden and saw what them people was like. If you really went to Africa and you really saw what the people was like, you went to Haiti, you went to Puerto Rico, if you really traveled across the country, you would see that all people is the same. It's way more people that's good mm. than the fucked up individuals you're seeing. And if you understood that, it would change everything. So I don't, I, I, I don't have any favorites in the world just because every place is dealing with their own issues, their own troubles. All places look better than they actually are for My the people that God. live there. Mm -hmm. And it's always a difference between what it seems like and what it, actually and what it is like. People will tell you, I went to Paris. I was there at the Eiffel Tower. It, bitch, you had bed bugs. <laughs> and there were rats everywhere. And the food was terrible. Yeah. Tell the rest of it. Yeah. Don't tell some. Let me yeah. ask you a question. When you, go, when you go to these cities to tour, do you make it a habit of getting out? That's how I built my reputation. That's, That's also how I ended up question. in jail 19 times. I like that. <laughs> uh, because when I come to do a show, I'm really in your city. So whatever the strip club is, I'm there. Whatever the top bar is, I was there. Drink it. Whatever the... I was at it. You had a casino? I was at it. Like, what was it? Huh? Because I'm at your city. Right. I'm a, I'm going to this experience. is how I'm learning your city so that when I do my show, I can be talking about what I know, not what I think. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was what I did at every city that I went to. The first 15 minutes of my show is what it's like to be here. You see what I'm saying? And so that was always a part mm. of what kept my legend going to the point where I can still be in these arenas without you ever seeing a poster with my picture on it, without you ever seeing a flyer, without you ever seeing a post that goes, hey, it's Cat. Could y'all make sure y'all come out and come see me? Because I'm going to be in. Would you please come on out, guys? And I really am. Because we have a different respect. I know I'm coming. They know I'm coming. He has a vision and he sees what nobody else sees. Yo. You can be in a crowd of folk and be alone. And you can be by yourself and have the greatest company, period. I know they going to be there. And they know I'm going to do the best job I can possibly do. And they know beyond a shadow of a doubt, whatever hour he was doing when we last saw him, 
He won't be doing that hour when we see him this time. It's a whole new conversation. And because I've never strayed from that, they've never strayed from their part. I'm looking at some of the the, uh, the the actors that you've been on screen with. Cube, Tracy Morgan, Regina Hall, Terrence Howard, they's uh, look, Nick Cannon, I mean Tiffany. I mean, bro, who who brings out the best in Cat Williams? How do, how does someone get the best out of Cat Williams? Do you need a comedian? Do you need a serious actor? How do we get the absolute best out of Cat Williams on screen? He just needs Cat. Well, I would be disingenuous if I didn't remind us that that's never anybody's goal. It's never anybody's goal to create a great situation for me to do a good job. Why? In, in a script. The way it works is the script is already there. This is a character in the script. If they give me the job, I make it my job that this character here, this character here, has to be as big as this whole project. So if you don't even see the movie School Dance, I want you to remember, whose goddamn white baby is this? <laughs> <laughs> and the only way that I can guarantee that you will remember my scene if you didn't remember a whole movie is if I make sure that my scenes are that good. Because yeah. that's what I watched. I watched no. great actors. You never saw De Niro. You never saw Pesci. You never saw uh, any of these dudes in something. You was like, nah, I don't really believe it. You sure you're the great Gatsby? Right. Like, no. Like, you believe that this dude, Daniel, is a hobbit. Yeah. That's part of the Lord of the Rings. Jamie Foxx right. became you see what I'm saying? Right. And so I, it's a, having a respect for the craft that I'm doing. That means I, I'm trying to do the best job possible. What was it like working with Spike Lee doing Priceless? I haven't seen that. Uh, Spike Lee is everything that you said I was in my intro. He's just really an innovator and a groundbreaking, one of a kind dynamo. You like Spike Lee? And, um, yeah. Yeah. And I knew that they were. Spike Lee's one of the angriest. Like, they tried to sabotage me even then. Though. Like, as soon as I said I wanted to get Spike Lee to direct it, because that was the biggest thing I could do, they immediately gave Spike to Gerard Carmichael and had him do his special too at the comedy store and just to undermine, like, but I, I. <clears throat> If there's one thing you can take away from me as a person, whether you like me or you don't, if you take this from me, you will be a better person. If you decide today that you're going to live every day like it's your last for real, which means have a conversation with yourself every night that, OK, that was it. May not be no more after that. And really count yourself every day like this could have been it. All right. Before I go to bed, this could be it. All right. How's that looking? If you can do that, it'll change your life. Facts. You'll really start making decisions and living your life like this. All you got just this one day. But you could be a winner. You could be a winner on this. Day. Facts. It just I love it's just that. work ethic and not the work ethic they talk about. They tell you work ethic where they do all these movies. I'm the hardest working man. Well, no, everybody goes to work every day. But right. I'm saying, I go to work all the time. Everybody who works goes to work every day. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. You get, <laughs> what? You think I respect you more than my gardener? I don't. I don't. He work every day. Rain or shine. I don't know if you saw this, but Taraji P. Henson got extremely emotional the oh. other day. She was giving an interview. Yes. And saying that they're vastly underpaid and say the math is not mathing. They get X amount this of dollars by the time about. Uncle Sam get his mm -hmm. cut, by the time the agency get their cut, and what you see they were supposed to get is a fraction of that. Wh wh where do you come down on that, Cat? It was the saddest thing ever because imagine, imagine being in your genre, in your sub-niche, whatever it is. Imagine being in your lane. Imagine being one of the very top of your lane that to the point where if they don't take you for the role, there's not three black actresses that they can say are bigger than you that we're going to give this to. Imagine you being at that point and have to humble yourself and say, they're not paying me, y'all. And they're not making my pay go up because I'm doing better or nothing. 
It don't matter to them that I'm famous and people know me or nothing. They want to pay me exactly what they pay in the new girl. And I've been suffering under it for a, de a decade now and just taking it. I just been getting whooped. But I just got to come say this is wrong. <gasps> oh. We should be shamed. But this is a country where we don't pay the teachers and then we say the kids is the Boy. most important thing. You can't have both of them. If you do that, we're going to end up with a generation that can't read. Guess what? Generation Z and A can't read. Why? Because who was giving them a book? We gave them an iPad or a phone. And now the letters don't mean the, there's no cursive writing. Right. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. Yeah, they what? don't pay teachers enough. Uh, the most underpaid or one of the most underpaid professions in this nation, Especially I know a teacher. High school teachers. Well, elementary, because, oh, I know a teacher who uh, is an art teacher. They spend their own money for their own supplies. They get paid less than what they did years ago. And then besides that, uh, they have to take pay cuts because they're even though like like they'll give them a raise, but then they take it back and they take it back through the insurance. And so so these teachers are paying out the wazoo for insurance. They're paying out the wazoo for their school supplies that they actually give to the kids. And then they're 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 uh, they're spending time teaching the kids. And the frustrating part about it is that they do it because they they love the kids by and large. They love the, the, these kids. And so they will dedicate and sacrifice and put more and more into it because they really believe, they stand on a principle that says that these kids really, I don't care what, Whitney sang it, but they really live it and they believe it. I believe that the children are our future. And so they will invest and sacrifice to the point where they, where they will short, they will short come or, or they they will uh, uh, they will defraud themselves in the hopes in the hopes of trying to improve the lives of these kids, and it, it sucks because because you got politicians who are raping raping uh, uh, their constituents, trying to get more and more out of them. But these teachers are sitting here suffering, and they do it because they have such a love for these kids. And man, I could I could go on that diatribe all hmm. day. Man, I, I just I get frustrated with it, but I'm sorry, you was gonna say something. No, I was <laughs> so yeah, it this is what period of time it's in. It's uh, the period where the victims get to say they've been hurting me for a long time, mm. and I just ain't said nothing because I was trying to be strong and I didn't want to shame anybody. God dog, God when dog. When our people call out for help, we gotta understand. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, like. Yeah. Like we 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 put too much pressure on Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He ain't put nobody on. The people that been in his productions, they not famous. All of them can walk through the mall without security. Be what you gonna be, but put your people on. If you a gay person and you in there, put some other gay people on. Put somebody on. Or don't be wondering why people keep saying gatekeepers. Because clearly, y'all are keeping these gates. Clearly. Wild and out. Wild How out. difficult was it for Nick Cannon to get you on? And what what was that What was you. that experience like? I've known Nick Cannon since he was a teenager. He had to have his... He, he In the comedy club, if you're underage, you can't be in the regular club. You had to be in the kitchen. Right. So I was the master of the kitchen every comedy place because I got a child and my child is back here in this place while I go on stage. Right. So I've known Nick Cannon since he was 14. Nick Cannon has never called and asked me to do one single thing and I turned him down because mm. I've known him since he was a young black child in Hollywood. Wow. I so love that. Um, what I did I in Wild and Out was to be his protector and to be his voice um, with hip hop. So the whole thing was the thing that he was trying to do had never been done before. You can't bring six comics in and let six comics talk shit about six rappers because the six rappers will beat the six comics ass. Right. You would have to have a comic that could actually stand in between and go, look, 
We comics, we going to say what we going to say. Y'all going to take it and understand it's a joke. If you want to fight, we fight before the show. So you can go out there with your black eye. <laughs> We're not going to do it comedically. This is what needed to take place right. in order to be it. for it to be successful, which is why it had already aired and didn't work. And then suddenly when it comes back with me, it suddenly works because respect has to be in there as well. Or if you do trying to do it with Kevin Hart, you and him going to get run over. You, you, you a teenager. He fired too. Like, what's going to happen? Who are some of your favorite young comedians? I don't, I haven't seen a young comedian I don't like. Wow. If you name mm. any of the young comedians, I'm aware of all of them and they're all doing a great job. It doesn't matter if it's Country Wayne that. or Desi Banks. It doesn't matter if it's Carlos or Chico. It doesn't matter if it's <laughs> uh, DC or just hilarious. It, do, it really doesn't, it really doesn't matter once we go to the young part. Um, the young comedians are dealing with things that we never dealt with. And so that gives them more benefits, but it also gives them uh, more chances of failure. So it's not easier for them. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a big supporter of um, young comics. We, we have uh, Miss Pretty Ricky and Takara Williams. Um, I've taken 25 uh, black women on the road in these tours. Um, it's important to me that the young comic uh, gets the benefits and the advantages of the big comics platform. I love it when people who Matt have Reif, influence use it while for good. Recently got canceled. You see Jonathan Majors, what he went through, Marvel dropped him as soon as the guilty, uh, uh, the conviction came out. And you were telling the Hey, you saw that black woman come get his charge cut in half? Thank you, Megan. Good. God bless you. Coming to save that slave. <laughs> if he'd had to be there by himself, he was getting awful. Guilty, 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 guilty. She came in there was just so beautiful. They had to knock half of it off. <laughs> bless his heart. Wow. So, Matt Wright, you know, you know him from uh, Wild and Out. He gets canceled for a time. Trying to tell him. I never knew him from Wild and Out, to be honest. Okay. I, I, I came across him as a new comic. Okay. And um, yeah, you know I'm really just trying to see the comics, mm -hmm. judge where they are, see it. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. So the, the canceling, uh, the, what, what, what do you think about this cancel culture? You see the situation with Jonathan Major. I mean, for all sense and purposes, I, I don't know. Maybe he can bounce back in, in a couple of years. But man, he was he was hot. He was hot. As, he was cooking. I mean, you see him in Creed. He's in the Marvel movies. And then. Just like that. Maybe I'm a conspiracy theory, but I thought Cal Williams said any that time they make you into that position, they part of that away. contract is you do understand whenever we want to take you down, we can, right? Mm -hmm. Part of giving you the world. First of all, they went around the world for two years straight telling any women that would listen that this was a good looking Negro. Mm hmm. Since when? When did y'all start liking a big nose? And <laughs> when did y'all like a little head and a big jaw? When? Since when? That look like my daddy. When you start liking my daddy? You like black people's features like that? If this ugly nigga is good looking, then all niggas is good looking. Wow. <laughs> Anytime you see them telling you something you can't believe, just understand it's a play. And it don't matter. You gonna know it's a play as soon as they get in that position and think they's gonna tell somebody something. No, you're not. No, you're not. Mm. Marvel will cancel you so f you won't be allowed to read a comic book. <laughs> what is you talking about? <laughs> ah, get out of here. Get out of here, ugly boy. Uh, yeah, they love fooling the people. <laughs> What's your relationship yeah. like with Suge Knight? You still close with Suge? Have you spoken to him? Have you talked to him recently? Yeah, he's doing good. Um, mm. Yeah, he's uh I Man, when you a friend, you a friend for life with Where's the uh Shuggy? Yeah, because the people know. that you come to me are trying to better their know. life. Oh. They're not trying to continue doing what they have been doing. Okay. So when somebody comes to me, male or female, it is in the auspices that this is what I did. This is what I used to do. This ain't what I want to do no more. And I want to do something else. Oh, and cool. I'd like it to go a different way. Okay. That's, I, that's what I offer. Yeah. 
So um, if you come to me under those auspices, then my loyalty is lifelong. Why would it not be? Tory Lane and Meg. What, what would you take on that? Because I know you get, you got to take on everything. I know it's, a, it's a difficult position because somebody's not going to tell the truth. And the truth has got to be told. In all circumstances, the truth has got to be told. So if you don't want to say she shot her, then you shot her. And that's the end of that. Oh. That's true. You said you've never, have you ever spent time in jail? 30 times. <laughs> <laughs> he never went to prison when you was in there what was going through your mind cat what did, what did i mean some people like man i had an opportunity to reflect and i was like man this ain't the place for me i ain't coming back here when you in so, so what, i've what, never i've never been in jail and it was my decision to be there if, if if it's dangerous to be in the hood and you have to have a gun on you for protection and it's either be judged by six or I mean, judged by 12 well, or carried by, by six, six. I'm always going to have my heater on me. So if you want to tell me that you're going to pull me over 15 times looking for it, I'm going to tell you 15 times you're going to find it. Unfortunately, I smoke cigarettes and weed. If you catch me 15 times, 15 times I'm going to have it on me. What do you think I'm in jail thinking? Oh, I don't fuck up. <laughs> Damn these decisions. I'm not going to protect my life at all when I get out of here. Fuck it. Let them do what they want to do to me. No, no. I, when I'm in there, I'm fine. And I'm understanding that I'm put here for a reason. And the people that get joy off me being in here are really going to look stupid because I'm finna be free. Because you got to mm. be setting this up. I'm never anywhere to get anything. You don't know I just made $300,000 in your city. That's why you think I might be out here as a ne'er-do-well. You think I'm, he's smoking weed. Yeah, he's got a medical license for it. He needs it. It's his only medication. Do you mind if he takes it? It helps him eat. Because he does 19100 city tours flying across the line. And so he doesn't get hungry on the regular. He doesn't get sleepy at night. He's got to literally put himself to sleep. He's literally got to make himself eat. So this marijuana helps him do both of those things. Marijuana well, help you sleep? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because remember, remember, as a comedian, yeah. what you're doing is against your natural timeline. Your natural timeline wouldn't be that you would start your work day at eight o'clock p.m. Right. And then your work day is over at two thirty a.m. Like that's a weird. Yes. Right. So to tell your body now that we're pumped up on endorphins. Now let's go to sleep at three. It don't work like that. Your body has to try to get a whole new schedule. So, you know, it suffered, but that's what worked for me. I consistently used it. I told people all across the country, don't worry, this will be legal in our country. As soon as they find out how to charge taxes for it, we will be legal in this country. Do they view me as some sort of visionary for my forward thing? No, no. You own drugs. <laughs> what I heard. <laughs> Yeah, but how you been? I mean, bro, every time they try to put you down, they try to put you to the back. Yeah. You put you bounce up, you move right back to the front. Damn, you I mean, you like a Super Bowl. You just keep bouncing and you bounce higher. Trampoline skin is something that you ask God for. When I watched mm. you play football, you had I ain't never heard that one. Mm. Trampoline skin. There's some people that I like that. There's really no such thing as hitting Shannon Sharp so hard that he don't want to run the ball the next play. Right. Absolutely. And if that's your only goal is to hit him so hard that he don't want to be him no more, you just out of luck. Yeah, you wasting your time. There's no, no your coach can't help you. There ain't no pep talk going to help you. Mm -mm. Don't matter about the uniform, your chili. None of that matters. I love if it mind. ever gets to mano y mano, may the best man win. And if you've been living your entire life trying to be the best man that you can for mm -hmm. yourself, then you should feel great about those odds. Yeah, what do you don't. think about Kanye rants? What's going on with Kanye? From a distance, obviously, I don't know how well you know Kanye. I don't know if you've been around Kanye, but from a distance, what 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 do you suspect's going on? I suspect that we're pretty awful people, 
if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. Mm. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? Wow. Wouldn't you grade them on a curve? Or help them. Wouldn't you go, whew, this guy. Because, I mean, what are we reacting to? What are we reacting to? You're the one that put him in a position where he thought he was God and could call himself Jesus. And you're the one told a guy that writes musical lyrics that he was a genius. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's like, so what? What do you expect? The guy married a whore. Like, what? Oh, Lord. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I mean, married her because she was one. Not he didn't know. He understood that he wanted that. He courted that. That's what he wanted to base his family on. But maybe she got, she got a good heart, though. I know what you're going to say. Don't you say it, Kat. Don't you say it. I'm going to move the conversation. If what I'm saying is not correct, then how does she end up with Pete Davidson? <laughs> I mean, it happens all the time. <laughs> and what if you weren't even good enough for Pete and he leaves you? What do that mean the product was? <sighs> Ooh. No, I don't, I don't support or villainize Kanye because I don't understand what it is we want from him. Wow. I, I don't know why we look at a basketball player and say, he didn't score no hockey goals this whole season. <laughs> he don't play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye don't say nothing I can agree with. Yeah. Okay. I, he was the weird guy in the beginning with the pink sweaters right. when we met him. Like. Yeah. What do you think moving to a beat of your own drop? This, this dude started a church and kept cussing. Nobody in black church said nothing. You would have thought all the pastors would have came. You can't be no gospel artist. You just said fuck that bitch. <laughs> Nobody said nothing. Because T.D. Jakes over there with Pete in it. Like, oh, man, come on, cat. Uh -oh. Only the guy you had here has been upfront and honest and a man of God and humble and took the L's he had to take and didn't. I I did see it was trending though, but I ain't know. I, I don't. I don't, I ain't know why I can't. I don't. You heard what happened with T D J. Let me go to this question yeah. right here. Yeah. Cool. All people that love the truth gotta be happy if the truth coming out and lies is getting exposed. That's just what time it is. I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of everything that happened with Jake's, but I will say this: um, <clears throat> you will do some things in life that you're not proud of. I don't know what Jake's did or didn't do. Um, people who are who are railing and running to try to condemn him, however, I consider the majority of them to be cowards because they look at a man who has picked up a the bloodstained banner and said, I'm going to preach about, about Jesus. And they're looking to tear him down because they don't have the same courage that he does to step into that arena and try to preach about Jesus. Um, uh, and then when he has the nerve to fall or fail, they cheer as if though he ain't been nothing all along. Ain't nobody in the Bible ever been perfect. Everybody in the Bible who did God. something profound for God, listen, everybody uh -huh. who did something profound for God, they were all flawed. All of them had issues. Every last biblical writer had issues. Every one of them. And we're all just, just big pieces of clay. So from one piece of clay to the other, you cannot turn around and say you jacked up because you're a piece of clay. You can't. And people will make mistakes and people will 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 turn on you is it's the nature of the business is it's just unfortunate. Um, so as far as with Jake's, I don't know what he did or didn't do. Uh, I just hope that if he did do the stuff all because I, I don't even know what all the stuff they're saying that, that he did. They say he I, um, what I gonna say. I don't know what all he did, but what, what whatever it was that he did. OK, I'm sure he's sorry for it. Don't do it again. Pick up and keep living. He, you, you can't commit suicide because you did wrong. I mean, it's like it's like what is okay. What was he supposed to do? 
after he got caught up with Monica Lewinsky, it's, it's like folk keep throwing that, that stuff in his face. Yeah, it was jacked up. It was wrong. Okay, fine. But after that, now what do you expect him to do? Do you expect him to just die because he messed up? No. If Hillary took that rascal back, doggone it, you wasn't, wasn't in the bed with them. Leave that man alone. Let him and her do whatever they're going to do. But instead, instead, what they do is they try to try to figure out ways to vilify them and use their story for their own benefit. And this is it's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. I just I just know that that some forms of of disrespect. Um, OK, you can close some doors with disrespect that an apology cannot open, though. And so 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 hopefully uh, when you when you jack up, you stand up, you say I did it. And you keep going forward and you become a better person, not in spite of what you did, but because of what you did. 2024, folks. Are you related to uh, Luda? No. um, So there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing. And it had to be one or the other of us. And decisions had to be made. So it was both of us. We were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair. And couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. <laughs> now, one person ended up with a light skinned, ugly faced wife that's never done a. Remember, I told you that if I say that, it applied to seven people. Yeah. It's part of what they give you. OK, I didn't get it. I'm not mad about it. How much money they give? Two hundred. Sir. Fast and Furious is on what number right 10. now? Ten. Two hundred million. I might need to get me one of the more women. <laughs> Look the same. That's what they all end up saying at the end of the day. Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. When did he wear a dress? Kevin Hart. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? It's okay. It's all right. You have a lot of politics. Never talk about it. I'm not that controversial. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where are we go? Where are we headed, Cat? Uh, this is sad. This we've never been here before. That we've never true. been at the that point where true. neither option is good for us in real That's life. No, so this is a different conversation. Is. This is: Would you rather go back with your ex, or would you rather go back with the person before them? <laughs> Both bad. Options. Both bad options. Uh, like one guy. One here, guy can barely. Put his sentences together and the other guy will put sentences together from whatever he's read <laughs> or whoever told him. Like, nah, but how do we get, how do we get here? How do we get here? All division divides. There's no way around that. All division divides um, politics. Even in the beginning, when our Constitution was drawn up, the the. Two parties was not what they had in mind. No. They always thought that it would be two main and another independent mm-hmm. party. They always assumed the independent party would be um, just as strong as the others. Uh, a, a lot of that just didn't happen. And um, that's what I've learned more from comedy is that Republicans laugh at the exact same thing that Democrats laugh at. That's as fair. long as I'm talking to Democrats, I could make them laugh for one hour straight about what Republicans do. By the same token, I can go talk to Republicans for one whole hour and have them dying about the stuff that Democrats do. But at the end of the day, who does that? Yeah, your team got an offense and a defense. They're not supposed to be enemies. The enemy is the other side. Wow. You can't do politics like that. Nope. It's not good for the country. Man, you see this Mark Zuckerberg building this $270 million bunker? Yup. If you have a billion dollars, we have learned that you can do whatever you want to do. When Elon Leave Musk the world wants behind. to send space, 
things in space. You don't have to ask Leave nobody's permission. Behind. Congress don't meet. Senate don't meet. No police department got to be warned. He don't need a permit. None of that. If you got a billion dollars, you do what you want to do, and then you tell them what you did. Have you seen Leave the World that's Behind? That's how it go. What he been on the bar? Two hundred seventy million dollar bar. What do you know that we don't know, cat? Yo. Kim Jong Un. <laughs> what? I don't know what you don't know. Do you understand that people that are not very bright are in charge of nuclear bombs all Boy. across the country? Mm -hmm. That's what he knows. He knows that 30 percent of all weapons systems are running off regular Wi-Fi. So what does that mean? That means if a solar flare or a meteor hits either one of those, literally a bomb can go off just because the system accidentally got turned off. Yeah, that's what he knows. The, the people that are in power know that the people that are running the most complicated and deadliest things on the planet are just an average idiot. And you know lots of idiots. I do. Yep. And these these people are not special. Back in the day they were. Yeah. Not today. Not today. You say you smoke a little weed. You don't smoke with Snoop. Yeah. You gave a joke about smoking with Snoop. I'm actually a bigger smoker than Snoop. He'll, ah! he'll, he'll tell you that. But I don't nah. like I don't mix anything with my weed. <clears throat> I just do weed, right? Yeah. So well, probably. No, yeah, I nobody nah. has. That minimum, I mean, you nobody, got. Nobody but has. You keep, nah. Nobody nobody does 20 blunts a day like me for 30 years. Like, like I was the first person to have. You don't need that much weed. Oh, my, but nah, Chief Keith, I feel like nobody be. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't see how that becomes a badge of honor. <laughs> I, I don't. 20 bloods a day like me. Anywho. Yeah. For 30 years. Like, like I was the first person to have a weed roller, like somebody whose job it was. Like, I haven't, I haven't rolled a blunt in 20 years. You probably like, if you go, I'm saying I, I prefer the saliva of ladies. Oh, my goodness. No, no. Understand what Dang. I'm saying. If For a blunt. It's necessary for yeah, it to get lit, yeah. right? And so if you had spent 20 years smoking with dudes, that's a lot of male saliva that no, you would have just accidentally you know what talking about? ingested. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't, but if I, don't kill I, can't, I can't be this specimen on that. <laughs> it takes uh, the... But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take uh, the I'll be having, saliva of nice ladies on that. But yeah, I'll I'm, I'm a, yeah, yeah, that's all I do. That's just that. do you consider yourself a king of comedy? Where the where the sure. no? They they consider that. Oh, that like like when sure. after Bernie left, them same three guys I'm telling you about the kings. Yeah, right. Because DL is the greatest. Yeah. There's, there's no DL slander gets tolerated. Um, DL. But. They came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm going to let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Fuck you. <laughs> Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was Who supposed did? to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. I don't know what he means by that, but that's evidently some insider stuff because I have literally, I've seen all of them say that Bernie, Bernie was the best. And I don't even think it's about competing, to be honest. I think it's just... Another. I love Bernie Mac. I met Bernie Mac uh, before he passed. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is that you don't... You, you don't gain by beating somebody else <clears throat> up you gain by elevating other folk and i've never seen i i can say for me i've never seen any of them diss bernie um i've seen steve harvey speak you know speak nothing but splendid things about bernie cedric as well as DL. I don't know the inside the well as cat does so cat may be on some different stuff because mm -hmm. he knows 
uh, differently than I do. I'm I'm on the outside. He's Look behind that girl. velvet rope. It was Steve's tour. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy. It was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course, you got to close if it's your tour. That's why it was such a big deal. But you couldn't do it because you can't beat the best. And until you humble yourself, you will forever be kinged by the king. And because you finally did it, because you didn't have no other choice, and now that he gone, you gonna act like he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all, and y'all thought y'all had one over on him. You thought he was black and ugly, and you were good looking, and he couldn't make it, because you did. And that ain't the way comedy works. The king is the funniest. Period. Every time. And that's why no audience member was ever swayed. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. Get your ego out of this. And matter of fact, you let the best. I saw the Kings of Comedy live in Memphis. And I want to say. I don't think I don't remember if Bernie went last or not, so I don't I don't even, I can't I can't even fully speak on that. But he's right in as much as um, the funniest is the one who's going to get recognized no matter what the order. And I think everybody just went because they loved comedy so much that it really didn't matter. And to me, that's the essence of what uh, comedy is about. And just going uh, with the intent of having a good time with the expectation of having a good time. And then the result is you had a good time. Let's be the best. Right. Cat, Cat William, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming on, bro. I really appreciate that. Thanks for sharing the, Thank you. the stories, setting the record straight. Now, you know, they're going to double back. Impossible. Oh, yeah. Impossible. Yeah, Only because if once you play this back, you'll realize I didn't say anything that made me look in a good light. I, I wasn't tearing down others to boost myself up. I, but I do have to acknowledge things that did not take place. Like, we're very ingenuous if we say this is not a game and we don't play it and people ain't in positions and people don't have their favorites and they group and they click. And, right. Well, that happens in all businesses. Right. We, no, no. Say what side you on, say why you don't like the other side, and then get to the game. But in the game, I'm wiping the field with them to the point where they don't even compete anymore. So how you gonna let a dude that been on the bench for 15 years, uh, I would've beat Jordan's ass. Shut up, Jordan is still alive. <laughs> we'll call Jordan right now, you can't beat him now. <laughs> Not then. You can't beat him now. Right. Cat Williams. Shannon Sharp. Hmm. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Wow. Let's take away. Wait, wait, just let it go. Hey, all my life. Like, hey, okay. Running all my life. Wow. Yo. Wow. I feel like I've just like 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 I've been been in a subterfuge and just took a crash course in life. That was that was a wonderful, wonderful interview. And the thing about it is that for 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 those of you who watched the, the interview raw or those who have watched part one and part two of, of us actually doing this, I normally don't even sit through a through a through an interview this long or three hours this long. This is almost three hours. And this has been one of the most quality um interviews I've seen in a long time. Um uh and you know what's good when you get lost in it. And so so you forget about time and you just you're 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 drawn to what's being said. My hat's off to Shannon Sharp for this and Cat Williams as well. Cat is gonna catch flack and he really don't give a flip. And that's that's fearless. that's what I love about it. Cause he, because he because he is fearless. Shannon, Shannon didn't know what he was in for, but Shannon, please know that that this was this interview here. Is going to be one of those things that 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 slings you into a realm of dang near infamy because it was so raw and so true, and you were part of the vessel that helped bring this thing in. So my hat, I just I love this. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, I'm a cheerleader for certain brands of foolishness, and so so for this, 
Um, my hat goes off to both of these cats, to, to those that are behind the scenes, for, for whoever it was that was coaching and, and speaking and, and trying to correct the facts because that person is, is uh, 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 at least is trying to make sure that things come out with integrity and with some honesty. And so you can't help but cheerlead truth. And so I love it, man. I, I, I love both of both of these brothers for what they've done. I can't say say enough good about this, man. So I'm just 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 humbled, appreciative, and thankful that I, that I had a chance to witness this. Make sure y'all subscribe, gang. We out. <laughs>